in order to do the prime factorization factorization and to find out if a number is prime or not we need to look at the divisibility test so very very important these divisibility tests because we are not computer up computers after all so we need to use the aid of this divisibility test to quickly uh, do factorization and to quickly find out if a number is prime or not so here are the first kinds of divisibility tests here we just simply can find out if a number is divisible by uh, let's say 2 by looking at the last digits just by looking at the last digit a number is divisible by 2 only if the number is even that is very very simple okay so numbers like 2 4 6 8 they are even numbers and those numbers are divisible by 2 if you look at their last digits they definitely follow a pattern okay so then next will come 12 14 and 16 18 and 20 okay so these are the last digits of our even numbers okay they are 2 4 6 8 and 0 so only in that case we would find those numbers to be divisible by 2 what about divisibility by 5 numbers are divisible by 5 if they either end in 5 or 0 only in that case are they divisible by 5 very very simple normal circumstances if you look at the table of 5 those are the only two kinds kinds of numbers that you would actually find divisibility by 10 is also very very simple if you look at the table of 10 the only numbers you will find there are the numbers which end in 0 so those are the only numbers which are divisible by 10 divisibility by 100 is also very simple numbers would have to end in two zeros so i would need two zeros for 100 okay so that is the that are, those are the those are the divisibility tests simplest ones where we just need to look at the digits of a number the next kinds of divisibility, divisibility tests are those where we have to do the sum of the digits. So here we have to do sum of the digits. <coughs> For example, let us look at a very very simple number. Uh, <laughs> sorry, not such a simple number, but very very simple divisibility test. So here we have a number 61809 and the sum of the digits of this number, okay, if I add the all the digits, that sum comes out to be 24. Now, because this 24 is divisible by 3, the number itself is actually divisible by 3. So, if the sum of digits is divisible by 3, the number is divisible by 3. If the sum of the digits is divisible by 9, the number is actually divisible by 9. Again, let's for 9, let's look at a simple example. Let's look at a very simple example. Let's see 54. What happens? 5 plus 4 is 9. And of course, we know that 54 is divisible by 9 and 9 is also divisible by 9. So the sum of the digits is divisible by 9. The number itself is divisible by 9. So those are the uh, very simple rule for divisibility tests of 3 and 9. Let's try to get an intuition for why, for why they actually work. So here, what I'll do is that I'll write a number, a four digit number as A, B, C, D. Okay. This I can write in expanded form as and we have all studied expanded form already. So, in our earlier classes, I can write this as in this way. Very, very simple, not difficult. Now, what I do is that I break this thousand using the distributive property. Okay, using the distributive property, I can write down this thousand A as 999A plus A. I can write this 100B as 99b plus b this 10c i will write it as 9c plus c and this d would come as such so here i have done nothing i have just used the distributive law as such then i combine these terms 99a 99b 9c these things i can combine and one of the things that you will immediately notice as soon as you write it is these terms all have factors of 9 okay so i can simply write it as i can take out the i'll use the inverse of distributive law and i will write it as the inside thing i will write it as 111a plus 11b plus c and no matter what this thing is it doesn't matter this all of this would always be divisible by 9 so this entire term these all things are always divisible by 9 as well as 3 because 9 is a factor of this term so this entire term is divisible by 3 of course 
we left these three numbers these four numbers so we have to write them down as well so here we'll write them down a plus b plus c plus d so and there is of course an addition sign between these two so these four these three terms are here and these four terms a b c and d they are here this term is always divisible by 9 so my remainder cannot come if i divide by 9 or 3 my remind, remainder cannot come from here my remainder always has to come from here if this thing the sum of the digits this is essentially what sum of the digits if the sum of the digits also becomes divisible by 3 or 9 the entire number would become divisible by 9 because this thing is always divisible if i make this thing also divisible by 3 and 9 the entire number becomes divisible by 9 okay so that is the intuition behind using behind this uh, property of numbers behind this divisibility test of 3 and 9 similarly we have a property of di with divisibility test of 11 as, as well so here for 11 we say that if i sum the odd digits and i make a difference of odd digits sum of odd digits and a sum of even digits that number if it's zero or divisible by 11 the entire number is divisible by 11 so here let's just use an example to to find this out okay so let's take an example of 627 here we'll first use the uh, odd digits so odd digits so let's just write down the numbers of what are the numbers of the digits this is first digit second digit third digit so these are the odd digits first and third so i make their sum and then i do the difference with the even digit which is just two in this case if there was other even digits i would sum all of them together this comes out to be 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 this is 13 minus 2 and this comes out to be 11 and 11 is of course divisible by 11 and therefore my original number 627 is also divisible by 11 the same exercise let's now do it for four digits and see how we would do this we can do 3 1 3 5 okay so that is the example we'll take next again we'll number the digits 1 2 3 and 4 we'll sum the these digits 5 plus 1 those are the odd digits and then we also sum the even digits that is 3 plus 3 and I subtract 3 plus 3 okay and I subtract those two together okay these two added sums I subtract with each other and the answer comes out to be 0 if the if the difference between them is 0 we already said that the number is divisible by 11 therefore this number is also divisible by 11 and you can test it indeed it is divisible by 11 why does this property work so let's get some intuition as we did in the earlier case again we will write down the digit sets a plus a b c d and this is nothing but we will write it in expanded form 100 b plus 10 c plus d again we will use trick and we will just write these digits a little differently so d we cannot do anything with it so d will keep as such this number 10 c what we will do is that we will just write it as 11 c minus c so that's what we'll do we can do that okay so i've created a multiple of 11 if you notice then this 100 b will simply write it as 99 b plus b i can do that and of course there is an addition sign right here this 1000 a we can simply write it as 1001 a minus a and of course there is a addition sign right here now again i combine these terms what do i get a plus 99 b plus 11 c and these terms if you if you were to check it out yourself they are all divisible by 11 so this entire thing is actually divisible by 11 so this divides by 11 completely evenly if any remainder were to be there it has to come from these and of course minus a which is nothing but if i were to write it in a correct in a nice way this is nothing but i lose b plus d minus minus a and minus c i'll combine and this becomes a plus c okay so this is nothing but our sum of odd digits minus the sum of even digits 
so if this sum of odd digits minus sum of even digits also happens to be uh, a multiple of 11 okay if, if this was also divisible by 11 this entire thing would become divisible by 11 so this is how this divis divisibility check works out this is always divisible by 11 so all i need to check is whether this is divisible by 11 or not and that is what i am i am doing that is my divisibility test so okay hope you got the intuition behind these divisibility tests because it will help you remember them in a better way now we move on to simpler tests for in case of four my divisibility tests are very very simple if the last two digits are divisible by four my entire number becomes divisible by four so let's take an example 136 if i divide it by four i know that 36 is divisible by four therefore this 136 also has to be divisible by four and that is indeed the case this answer comes out to be 34 okay so if i were to find the answer i can find it out let's just take another example this time we'll use the uh, example of last three digits okay we'll try to find out the divisibility test for eight in case of eight if the last three digits are divisible by eight my entire number is divisible by eight so i i need to check the last three digits in this case the last three digits are indeed divisible by eight 136 divided by 8 is equal to 17 so this 136 is divisible by 8 completely therefore this entire number 1136 is also has to be divisible by 8 and my answer in this case is 142 so for 8 check the last three digits for 4 check the last two digits okay last three last two. very very simple now let's see how we can combine the various divisibility tests together to use it to our advantage to extend the utility of those divisibility tests. So here is the first rule. If we can find a number which is divisible by two co-prime numbers, then it is also divisible by their product. So what does that mean? It means that let's take a number, let's say 72. Okay, We say that 72 is divisible by 4 and 72 is also divisible by 9 since 4 and 9 they are co-prime they don't have any common factors between them therefore this 72 would also be divisible by the product of these two co-prime numbers which is 9 4 36 and it is of course divisible by 36 the answer comes out to be 2 so that is what this rule says again we have extended the utility of our uh, divisibility test and we have we are able to create the divisibility test of 36 by using the divisibility tests of 4 and 9 okay that is the what we have done actually here the second rule states just that okay a number is divisible by a given divisor let's say 36 again so 72 would be divisible by 36 if it is divisible by highest power of its prime factor so what are the prime factors of 36 it is 2 into 2 into 3 into 3 now if i combine these prime factors together for example i combine 2 and 2 i combine 3 and 3 so i can write it as highest power of the prime factor 2 is 2 square highest power of prime factor 3 is 3 square so what this rule is saying is that if the number this our number 72 is divisible by the highest power of the prime factor 2 which is 2 square and it is divisible by the highest power of this prime factor 3 which is 3 square then the number would also be divisible by 36 okay so 36 the highest power is of 2 is 2 and highest power of 3 is 3 ultimately we have done the same thing we have created the two numbers we have divided 36 into two numbers which are both co-prime so this is 4 and 9 so we were able to divide 36 into two co-prime numbers 4 and 9 and if 72 is divisible by 4 and 9 individually then it would also be divisible by the product of those two co-prime numbers 9 4 are 36 okay see to create a divisibility test test of 36 we have to divide 36 into two co-prime numbers and that is the most important thing here i can create a divisibility test of 36 by dividing it into two numbers 4 and 9 which are both co-prime if I were to divide 36 in for example 12 into 3 and then I check the divisibility by 12 and 3 I cannot say anything about divisibility by 36 so this would be completely wrong 
to create a divis divisibility test of 36 i have to divide it into two co prime numbers that is the most important thing okay and it will of course extend the utility of our divisibility test the next important rule is that if a number is divisible by a given number for example let's say that 24 is divisible by 6 then 24 would also be divisible by each of the factors of 6 okay so if 24 would be divisible by 2 it would also be divisible by 3 that is what this rule is saying each of the factors of number 6 okay here we are not constrained by just the co prime factors or, or factors which are co prime we are just saying that if 24 is divisible by 6 it will be divisible by all its uh, factors no matter whether we have been we are divided 6 using co prime numbers or not okay so that is what this rule is saying the next rule is if I have two numbers, let's say 12 and 20 and this 12 and 20, they are both divisible by 4, then there is sum and difference. So, if I do 20 plus 12 or if I do 20 minus 12, both of these would also be divisible by 4. This is what this rule is saying and of course, we know that 20 plus 12 is 32 which is divisible by 4 and 20 minus 12 is 8 which is also divisible by 4 and this to some extent comes because of the uh, distributive property because I can write 20 as 4 into 5 and then there is a plus or minus sign here depending upon what we choose and then 12 can be written as 3 into 4. Now if you notice 4 can be taken out common and what we are left with is 4 into 5 plus minus 3 and of course this part is always an integer and 4 is has been taken out common so this entire thing would be divisible by 4 this entire number is divisible by 4 which means that 20 plus 12 and 20 minus 12 would be divisible by 4 so we have used somewhat inverse of distributive law here to just prove this this fact okay so very very simple these divisibility tests are very very important and with these rules the combination rules you can use them for bigger numbers as well by using the smaller divisibility test can be applied to bigger numbers you can you have the divisibility test of 11 and 4 you can apply it to for example 44 by using these uh, these simple rules and of course divisibility tests are useful they are useful when we want to find out if a number is prime and more importantly they are useful when we are doing the prime factorization of numbers. So definitely use this divisibility test. They would help you solve the problems quickly. Okay, because ultimately that's what we have to do. We have to not only solve the problem, but we should do it in a given time. And your teachers are expecting you to use the divisibility test when creating such problems.